Hi, I'm Mike Morrissey. Every year, a group of 30 plus medical professionals travel to San Lucas Talimon in Guatemala to perform orthopedic surgery on local children. In March of 2019, I joined the team to document their work. The following is an interview with one of the team members. My name is Mark Hestbold. My role on the team is logistics. I help coordinate getting the folks to the medical mission. Uh, I originally became involved, Steve Miller made a presentation to my Rotary Club and during that presentation he talked about some non-medical people that he had on the mission and how helpful they were and I thought, wow, if they could be helpful, maybe I could. So I went up to Steve after the presentation and I said that if you ever need somebody to go to carry bags, I'd love to participate in some way because I don't have a medical talent that might be as usable on a medical mission. What is your background? Uh, actually, my background, I'm a licensed architect, have a architectural business and um, just do more project management is what I really do at this time. Um, after I mentioned to Steve I'd be interested in doing that, about six months later I got a phone call, or actually my wife said Steve called and asked if you want to go to Kathmandu. And uh, I had to look on a map to see where Kathmandu was. But anyway, I went, Steve and I did five missions to Kathmandu, and then this is our sixth mission together to Guatemala. My role again as logistics is Steve chooses the team, handpicks each individual on the team, and then once they've accepted the invitation, he turns the name over to me and I work to get their airfare booked, help them with that so that we know when they're arriving uh, and can arrange for transportation. We also have to submit in advance credentials of the folks on the medical team. So we need to get current notarized credentials. When does the process start for you? So Steve and Will Bogle will meet Saturday, the day after the mission is complete, and they will set the date for the following year. So we actually start, once Steve gives me the date for the team's arrival the, the following year, I book a set of rooms here in, Anti in San Luis Talamon and also get a, a group of rooms in Antigua so that we have those rooms set aside. We book those 10, 11 months in advance. And then we start with um, getting team members signed up and getting their credentials. So what is the most challenging thing for you in that process? Getting people to submit their, so probably the most challenging part of that process is getting folks to get their information in. Once they commit to being on the mission, then we need to get their credentials and oftentimes their diplomas framed on the wall and it's difficult to get a notarized copy of it. But uh, over the years I've learned that uh, it'll all come in and so I don't stress quite as much about getting it. In addition to helping the people and organizing their affairs, do you also get involved in the material that's coming along with them? Steve organizes a packing day and it's usually the first Saturday after the new year. So we always, it's usually the first Saturday in January we have a packing day and Steve gathers equipment all year long and puts it in his garage in Anacortes and then we get a large team together and it usually includes a number of volunteers from his uh, Rotary Club, the Fidago Island Morning Club, uh, comes up we document everything that goes into every box and I create a Word document with all of that information. So when we get down here, we have on the computer and also printed out where everything is, what box number, what bag, everything is in. Now that system works pretty well. So do you fly together with all the people coming down or do you come down ahead of them? Yeah, I usually come down, our missions are always Saturday is screening day and then the following week are operations. I usually try to arrive in Antigua, which is the town we kind of gather at out of Guatemala City. I arrive Wednesday night and then have Thursday to get anything that uh, we identify that didn't make it down on the flight. We often have bags that don't make it down. Antigua has an office depot store and, and other, I mean, yes, and other stores. And oftentimes we're trying to get 
supplies that didn't make it, and also help assemble the team and then to move together the less expensive our transportation costs are. And that is one of our major costs. Although I must say, every team member pays all their own way. They pay all their flight costs, they pay all their transportation costs, they pay for their meals, and they're donating their time, and oftentimes that's vacation time. And so it is quite a commitment from the team. And so once all of you arrive in San Lucas Talimon, does your role change? Yeah, actually, um, uh, the first day we, when we do our screening, my role is to help um, to bring the folks in and get file folders for the folks. We take a photo of every potential patient uh, with their name on a, on a piece of paper in front of them. So we have a positive identification of the folks we've screened. And to get their folder started, uh, get them registered, and then they go on for vitals and interviews by the doctors. So Saturday is a pretty, pretty busy day. Then Sunday, we sit down with a small group of doctors and create the surgery schedule. And we look at the, all kinds of things in creating that schedule. They obviously have to be healthy enough for surgery. Uh, the doctors look at who should be early in the week, who should be late. We try to get babies early in the morning because they're NPO and hungry. And so um, all of these factors go into setting that schedule. What's NPO? Uh, Nothing by mouth. Now, I'm not sure how that translates to NPO, but it, it really means that the babies can't have any water or any food uh, the starting the night before and then, and then until surgery. And then we get the surgery schedule set up. We do that Sunday, we email that to the hospital. And then the hospital folks actually do phone calls to all of the patients for the whole week. So people know when they're scheduled to come in so they can um, be prepared for surgery. Then during the week, my role just really becomes, uh, I, I have a kind of a station, if you will, outside of surgery and just a, a go-to. I don't necessarily know how to do anything, but I usually know who does know how to do what is needed or, or who to contact. Kind of a hub, I try to be in that spot because the doctors are, they, they need kind of one spot to be able to go to. We always have changes in the surgery schedule. Um, patients don't show up or new patients arrive. So we typically will generate a new surgery schedule every day, um, update that, work with the nursing staff to keep the surgery schedule up to date. Um, and then on the, uh, today happens to be Friday, which is the last day of the mission. This is uh, another busy day because we, we pack up and assign bags for folks to carry back to the United States of the equipment that we do take back. We also have a meeting at the end of the day, today the last day, where all of the doctors present their cases to the entire team talk about what they did on each operation, and it's really a pass off to Will Bogle, the doctor that stays here and does the follow-up care. What brings you back every year? Yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting. In 1986, I was president of the Noon Rotary Club in Anacortes, and when, the, when I was preparing my budget, I was hesitant to provide funds for international projects, I was very interested in local projects. We had a whole lot of local need and I didn't really understand the international side of it. This is, being on these missions has really given me an opportunity to see much more of uh, the need that's out there internationally. And um, it's, it's just been so rewarding for me to be able to go to Kathmandu and see and first-hand experience the need there to be here in Guatemala and experience the need. It's amazing and it's just an honor to be a part of this team. Um, that sounds like such a cliche, but if you think about the kinds of people that are willing to commit their vacation time, pay their own way, you know, it's a pretty special series of, or set of folks that are down here. and just to be able to be a part of them and that's it's 
Very rewarding. Yeah. Well, thanks for it.